Hi, this is Matata James and you're watching Joe today. <laughs> Dressing for success isn't about buying quality garments to wear, but also knowing your body type and what colors best suit you. We speak to an image expert to find out more. So if we start with a large body type, you can actually split those into two. You have one where you have a, a rather oval shape. In that case, you're talking about the guy with a really big stomach. He does have large shoulders, but his midsection is quite protruding. In that case, what you want to do is try and avoid any color, any attention going into that midsection. So what you want to do is play with the monochromatic color scheme. So what does that mean? That means keeping a single color structure throughout the, throughout the outfit. So that could be your darker colors, your grays, your charcoals, your black. And then you have another larger body type, that's the trapezius. These are those uh, gym guys, the guys with the really large shoulders. For them, the they have a similar aesthetic to the oval shaped body type. However, the trick with them is to be concerned about their shoulders. A lot of the time you find that these guys tend to wear tight fitting clothes and that really doesn't really work for their body type. And if you look at their jackets, they tend to have jackets that look like they're still wearing their shoulder pads. That shouldn't really be something that they should be going for. Uh, if anything, they should rather go for the unstructured type of jacket. That's one without the shoulder pads because they already have the natural shoulder going on. Um, then you look at, for, for example, the medium body type, that's more uh, my type of body. There's a lot more flexibility in this case, in terms of my body type. However, given my height, I have to be very careful about uh, certain colors. So I and rather body uh, cuts. For example, I can't be wearing very baggy clothes because it actually makes me look even shorter. So I have to play it safe in that, in that aspect. So I need to wear something that's rather more fitting, but not skinny. Skinny is never something that a gentleman should wear. And this also applies to the skinny man. The skinny man thinks because his body is a lot more flexible, he can get away with anything. The problem is that with the skinny person, you actually look even skinnier. And I don't think any man wants to look like that. I think that's something that uh, you would do in your earlier age, perhaps you when you're talking from a student, from your student times. It's not something that you want to do as an adult. So what you want to do is that you want to maintain your silhouette, but you don't want to look like your clothes have shrunk to your body because you left them in the wash. You know, people underestimate the power of tailoring. You could take a really cheap suit and make it look like a Hugo Boss by virtue of the fact that it's cut to your body. You need to be able to accentuate your body. You need to be able to be proud of your body, whether you're an oval shape, a trapezius, or whether you're just a guy who's really rotund. You need to be able to be proud of it, show it off, but not necessarily saying that you've got skin hanging out. It's important to have your clothes tailored because then they actually show your confidence. It's important to consider color of your fabric relative to the color of your skin because you don't want something that's gonna make you look, for lack of a better term, dirty. So for example, a guy like me with a darker skin tone want to stay clear from brown. That just makes me look dirtier, right? It makes me look unkempt. Uh, for a guy with a really pale skin tone, he wants to keep away from bright colors because that just exaggerates what he has naturally. So what you want to do with skin tones and relative to your colors of your fabrics is you always want to play at a safe contrast. When it comes to fashion, South Africa is playing catch up in certain aspects. And this I know through traveling that a lot of the time when I'm abroad, well, when we have, um, when we're free to travel, so to speak, we tend to want to play catch up to things that were trends uh, maybe three, four years ago from what's happening in certain parts of Europe. Whereas we should be looking at garments from the perspective or other outfits from the perspective of being timeless. Once we look at things from a timeless perspective, it's so much easier to add trends in smaller pockets as opposed to going all out into color blocking because it's the in thing. Because three to four years down the line, those items that you included to be trendy, you want to give them away. That's kind of, it, 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 I, think, I think that's sort of putting us back on the back foot. I think what's easier is to always build a timeless wardrobe, add pieces that you know that you will have them for the next 10 to 20 years. For example, if you look at a pair of Chelsea boots, a pair of, a pair of Chelsea boots are a classic shoe. I mean, Ralph Lauren himself owned a pair of these boots. You keep, he still wears a pair of Chelsea boots to this very day. This is a timeless cut of boot. You can wear it with your formal outfits. I mean, I could wear it with this very suit. You could wear it with a pair of stonewashed jeans. It's something that you're gonna have, or you could possibly even send it off to your grandchild in a couple of years to come. 
it's a timeless item to add to your wardrobe. When it comes to the upcoming winter season, we need to look at South Africa's climate. We tend to have a lot of cold, wet weather, particularly in the likes of Cape Town, and it tends to be dry in Joburg, but starting off with a bit of rain, looking around the times of April. In those cases, what you want to do is go for darker colors, but you want to go for water resistant fabrics. In particular, I'll give you a case with this fabric. This is a Drago fabric, it's called a rugby flannel. This fabric is actually quite uh, water resistant. You can actually make a suit or even a coat with it and just throw it on top of your suit or your casual attire, something to leave in your car or hanging next to your door. I think for me, I was born with it. Uh, it's an innate feature. Um, my, both my grandparents, both my maternal and paternal grandfathers were actually, um, I don't know if the term fashionista is appropriate for them given their age in time, um, but they were definitely born with a sense of style and I think I just adopted it from an early age and then I pretty much started working with it while I worked in corporate. But then while I was working in corporate, a lot of my colleagues kept on complimenting me at how I dressed at work. I mean, literally I'd walk into the office with three piece suits every day, even if the job didn't require it. And then at some point when I wasn't really happy with the growth or rather traction I was getting in my corporate job, I decided to actually take the leap of faith and go into what I was passionate about, what actually resonated with me, what I woke up thinking about. I mean, while other people were thinking about what they need to do on the spreadsheet, I was busy thinking about how somebody at the desk wasn't dressed appropriately. If you think about our slogan, dress how you want to be addressed, you are introduced by how you look before you even open your mouth. So it's critical as a man to actually look presentable so that you can actually get, or rather you warrant the attention from your audience.